So recently, AMD dropped FSR 3 frame generation with two titles supported at launch, Forspoken and Immortals of Avium. Now, myself, John and Alex saw demos at Gamescom, though didn't actually play them. So going hands-on has actually been a bit of a treat. First of all, to verify that outside of controlled conditions, AMD has done a good job here. But secondly, to get a handle on other stuff that we didn't get answers to at the time like what's really going on with vSync support, uh, latency mitigation, VRR, that kind of thing. Let's quickly review what frame generation is all about. Nvidia kicked it all off with DLSS 3 and in many respects, FSR 3 follows the exact same principle. Um, the next frame is rendered and the one beyond that too. Then with a combination of optical flow analysis informed via inputs from the game engine, such as motion vectors, for example, an intermediate frame is then generated that slots in between the two standard rendered images. Frame rate then typically receives an extraordinary boost. In my tests with FSR 3 in Immortals of Avium on an RX 7900XDX at 4K resolution, it's about 71% uplift in frame rate versus standard rendering. I'm careful with the words used to describe the frame rate increase because similar to DLSS 3, I don't think you can call it extra performance as such, even though both AMD and Nvidia are likely to be using that term. The game itself is still performing as it was without frame generation and in fact the extra calculations required to generate the intermediate frame have a cost of their own. So one might even argue that frame generation reduces performance, strictly speaking. The output though, what makes it to the player, is visibly much smoother gaming. More frames! It looks like extra performance, but it may not feel like it because well, buffering up that extra frame incurs latency and adds to the response time as you play. It can feel laggier. Nvidia uses its reflex technology to claw back as much latency as possible, while AMD has its own anti-lag and anti-lag plus technologies. Ideally, you'd be looking for the response time with frame gen to be the same as it is without. So, in our DLSS3 testing, um, to show you how it actually worked, we had to resort to a bizarre OBS workflow to acquire 4K 120fps captures. And really it's essential because high frame rate is where these frame generation techniques should be tested and how they should be used. That capture technique was tortuous in getting clean video to show you, but technology has now moved on thankfully and 4K capture in this video is achieved with this, the Yuan SC750N full HDMI 2.1 support, 8K at 60fps capture, and yeah, obviously 4K at 120 frames per second too. I've been sharing various media using this card with our backers on the DF Supporter program for months now, but this is the first time we've used it in anger, in a project, so to speak. First up, let's go over the basics. We've talked about how FSR 3 is very similar indeed to DLSS 3 in principle, but there are some differences. Difference number one. FSR 3 is cross-vendor. AMD has recommended specs for its use, but it's really just a compute shader. So if the game runs on your PC, FSR 3 should run as well. The issue is that anti-lag and anti-lag plus latency mitigations are on the driver level, so they're AMD only. But you should be able to use Nvidia Reflex if the game supports it, if you have a GeForce card, Still, thanks to AMD, older NVIDIA cards now have a frame generation option, which is pretty great, isn't it? Uh, the next difference is that DLSS 3 can run frame gen from any input. So, native resolution, DLSS, XESS, even FSR2 frames. Um, DLSS 3 will generate interpolated frames from any kind of base imagery you give it. AMD's FSR 3 is not so flexible. It only works with FSR2 upscaling or FSR2 anti-aliasing. Finally, DLSS 3 doesn't officially support VSync, but does work with VRR displays and also supports VSync off with pretty decent frame pacing. AMD strongly recommends VSync on here, and we'll get on to why shortly. Um, but, well, I'm pretty sure that VSync off isn't working properly, and I'm not sure that VRR works either. Let's talk about frame rate uplifts then. This is just scratching the surface really because frame generators should be tested in both CPU and GPU limited scenarios. 
across a range of kit. But look, this is just a first look video, not any kind of definitive analysis. Still, Core i9 here, 13900K paired with my RX 7900 XTX. My benchmark sequence is the beginning of Chapter 3 in Immortals of Avium. I'm using FSR 3 at native AA settings with the game on Ultra. And yeah, I'm using VSync for this for reasons that will become clear. Anyway, frame generation is delivering an uplift of 71% in frame rate terms. And moving on to a repeat of that test on RTX 1490, a more capable card, we're still getting a 67% improvement. So why do benchmarks with VSync active? I mean, that's not the proper way of doing things, is it? Well, I'll tackle that shortly, but for now I want to go back to show you something I noticed in the frame time visualization on the XTX bench. I decided to use native AA mode, which is 4K resolution with FSR temporal super resolution used only for anti-aliasing purposes, drastically improving image quality. A heavy workload like this ensures we're under the 120 FPS threshold, so the cap doesn't impact the performance differentials. But what's concerning here are the frame times. It's clearer if you take out the non-frame gen side of the equation and just focus on the FSR3 capture. The cadence just doesn't look right, and we shouldn't ping pong between such drastically different frame times. Now take a look at another sequence that isn't running frame generation, but has a similar reported frame rate. The switch to the 4090 is purely to match the performance level, and simply to illustrate that this is how VSync is supposed to present. The frame times on the bottom right there conform to what I would expect from that performance level with VSync in a 120Hz container. My takeaway here is that FSR frame gen seems to have frame pacing issues with VSync active that get worse the further you are away from the refresh rate of your display. So really you should be tailoring your settings to get as close to your display refresh rate as possible. And that could be tricky. So I think this is perhaps why AMD says that a 60 FPS minimum base frame rate is a good thing for FSR 3 frame generation. Now, this is a secondary Immortals of Avium benchmark I carried out. The higher the non-frame gen frame rate on the left there, the fewer the frame pacing problems via frame generation. But this sequence also highlights just how volatile performance can be from scene to scene. And with that in mind, I can't help but think that FSR3 frame generation frame pacing needs a bit of work here. It needs to be more consistent across the board. But what about VSync off then? Well, I don't think it's actually working properly. Here's a look at some capture, again sourced at 4K 120 FPS. You'll notice a persistent thin bar running up and down the capture. Now, what's happening here is that frames that persist for a very short amount of time are surrounded by frames that persist for far longer. Those little frames there are about 150 pixels high or thereabouts uh, within a 2160p image. I suspect these are our generated frames. We're talking about a frame there that's persisting for less than a millisecond, about 0.6 milliseconds. The fact that you can see it is because what you might call a runt frame is sitting within a 120 FPS video container. There is a dramatic improvement to the amount of frames being rendered, but when so many of them are only being displayed for around 0.6 milliseconds, they're actually becoming artifacts. They're becoming problems. Here's how our tools visualize that. Green bars are new frame information. Black bars are frames that are identical to the previous one. Red bars are the runt frames. And I think it's the generated frames that are being presented there. So the placement of the generated frames looks good, pretty consistent, but their persistence basically makes them an irrelevance. Again, I'm running the capture here at slow motion, but even at full speed on a 120 hertz screen, the runt frames are often very obvious. In this particular VSync off benchmark visualization, the frame rate counter is still counting the frames, but the frame time meter there, filtering out almost all of those run frames. Bottom line then, the FPS counter says you're getting an extraordinary boost to frame rate. However, frame time on non runt frames shows that the full frames you actually see are fewer in number than the standard non frame gen rendering. I think this is the reason why AMD strongly recommends VSync. Variable refresh rate, VRR, couldn't get it to work on my LG C10. 
there's a signal tagged as VRR, but no variable refresh rate is being picked up at all. My takeaway is that right now at least, FSR3 is VSync only. The weird thing is that AMD's docs do talk about VSync off support. So I shared my findings with Team Red to get some clarity and here's their reply. For the initial launch of FSR3, we focused on laying a strong foundation for the development community and launching with the best user experience, which meant having VSync on working well. FSR3 frame generation in our two launch titles were tested with both VSync on and off in combination with VSync enabled. For VSync off use cases, the FSR3 implementation in our two launch titles for Spoken and Immortals of Avium is using a slightly earlier version of the FSR3 codebase. We have already identified improvements which have been rolled out to the GPU Open FSR3 code release, which ensure better pacing between generated and real frame presentations. When playing the currently released titles on a high refresh monitor, we recommend playing on high refresh monitors with VSync on. Okay, so back to me now. Um, the bit about testing with both FreeSync on and off in combination with VSync enabled just doesn't compute for me. It suggests that VRR is working, but it's definitely not for me. I'm getting a VRR signal going through to the display, but there's no actual variable refresh rate. It's locked at 118 Hertz. Okay, so I think we need to accept that FameGen is still in its earliest iterations. We at DF had issues with DLSS3 at launch where VRR support was problematic. If frame rate moved above the VRR window, you'd get tearing. And that's not the experience we expect from variable refresh rate. That was fixed in due course, thankfully. These days you just select VSync on globally on the control panel. And well, hopefully the issues I've highlighted today with FSR3 will also get sorted. Uh, the run frame problem with VSync off, it's not an Immortals of Avium problem, by the way, as here's the same thing happening in Sporfoken. The issue being that the relatively even distribution of generated frames in Avium is all over the place here. I mean, AMD is saying this is early code, so let's focus on VSync on, where across a lengthy segment of gameplay, for spoken maxed out in FSR3 quality mode, averaged 116 frames per second. Uh, but yeah, obviously, the longer your clip and the longer you are at the frame rate cap, the more the average is smoothed out. Still, the fact is that a lot of the game does play out fully maxed at 120 FPS, offset by the effects heavy combat, which delivers a fair bit of frame time variance and can feel a bit choppy. Even so, you're still getting big frame rate increases. You just have to accept the VSync judder. My takeaway is that you kind of need to target your set refresh rate and adjust settings accordingly so you don't deviate too much from that figure. I mentioned that earlier, but it is tricky. Frame generation generally does a pretty good job of amplifying frame rate into the HFR high refresh rate window. But VRR smooths out the experience, and for me at least, that's the crucial component that just isn't working for me at least right now. Okay, so I've not talked much. Actually, I've not talked at all about the quality of the interpolated frames. That's core to what Alex is gonna be doing in his much bigger video. But again, FSR3 works in a similar manner to DLSS3. In fast moving scenes especially, interpolated frames won't look as good as natively generated frames, right? But the thing is that they're always surrounded by two traditionally rendered images. So artifacts, if you can see them, are kind of strobed, therefore making them more difficult to notice. Lock a game to 120 FPS and each frame persists for 8.3 milliseconds which isn't a great deal of time anyway for the interpolated frame to persist. Now, if you have a concertina effect of a lower quality frame surrounded by higher quality frames, as I said, it's harder to notice. And that's one of the key reasons why frame generation is best suited to high refresh rate gaming. Where things come unstuck is if artifacts persist over a number of interpolated frames. I'm gonna leave the deep dive analysis and stress testing to Alex in his content. 
But what you've been seeing throughout this video is DLSS frame gen based on DLSS2 quality frames compared against FSR3 frame gen based on FSR2 quality frames. The sequences I've clipped here are all locked to 4K 120, so perfectly alternating between native and generated frames. I'm using the 4090 for DLSS3 imagery and 7900 XTX for FSR3. Another reason I'm not going to talk too much in comparison terms about the frame gen techniques on display here is that they're based on different quality inputs, which makes like-for-like -like testing a lot trickier. We'll need to work on this and try to get FSR2 frame inputs working with DLSS3 to get a proper like-for-like -like matchup with the AMD frame gen tech. What I will say is that the most noticeable differences are coming from the upscaling methods, right? DLSS2 versus FSR2 as opposed to DLSS3 versus FSR3. Both are on quality mode in terms of temporal super resolution, but DLSS has fewer artifacts, so therefore fewer visual issues are going into frame generation. I think my basic takeaway right now is FSR3 is very comparable to DLSS3, and it's all done without custom hardware. On that front, it's an extremely impressive achievement. You can't really look at these side-by-side -side images in slow motion, no less, and instantly come up with a definitive winner, right? Clearly FSR3 in this scenario is getting the job done, and it's the FSR2 temporal super resolution component that is delivering the most obvious quality reductions against DLSS on the left there. I did some very quick latency testing in Avium, and I used NVIDIA FrameView to get the PC latency metrics, which includes game logic and rendering, but does not include peripheral or display lag. Immortals of Avium supports NVIDIA Reflex, meaning that markers are baked into the code, allowing for latency to be measured, even on AMD or Intel GPUs, which won't be running Reflex, of course. Some kind of bizarre results came up though. With no lag mitigation in place at all, measuring this static scene gave a 55.7 millisecond latency result without frame generation, rising to 64.5 milliseconds with frame gen on. I don't consider a circa 10 millisecond lag deficit to be a big deal, but this could change according to content. With basic anti-lag in play, essentially 4 to 5 milliseconds are shaved off both frame gen on and frame gen off results. So effectively, we're kind of in the same ballpark. But you know, the reduction is there and it is quantifiable. I'm sure you've skipped ahead to the anti-lag plus results and might be scratching your head. And to be fair, so was I. In this scenario, there's a massive reduction to latency without frame generation active. I mean, pretty impressive, right? a 28 millisecond reduction or thereabouts in latency compared to having no latency mitigation in place at all. However, weirdly, with frame gen on, anti-lag plus seemed to be consistently a touch less responsive than basic anti-lag. I tried a couple of other situations in the game with similar results, so it's a bit of a head scratcher really. Anti-lag plus potentially looks quite effective, but in Immortals of Avium at least, it didn't really play ball with frame generation. And so, coming to the end of this video, here's what I think of FSR3 right now. Quality of the interpolation is fine. Rather impressive, actually, once you factor in that it's a software solution up against a hardware-based solution from the competition. And the frame rate uplifts are exactly where they should be, on the hardware I've tested at least. Anti-Lag Plus I'd like to test on more titles, but I was surprised to see it making little impact with frame generation in Immortals of Avium, where it could really make a big difference. Overall, FSR3 is a really interesting technology, and I'm still quite taken aback by how this software solution is producing results that are up there against the competition. But similar to the launch of DLSS3, if not more so actually, a lot of things just aren't quite where they should be. As a starting point though, undeniably there is promise here. So for a quick look, I had a lot to say, I guess, and um, we've not even touched on image quality really, uh, but I'm gonna be leaving that to Alex, as I said. In the meantime, I'm gonna sign off. So like, subscribe, share if you enjoyed the work, and of course, bell ringing allegedly gives you a notification whenever we quote unquote drop a new video. So do consider that. A DF supporter program, early access, bonus materials, uh, bonus videos, DF Direct weekly privileges, an amazing, engaged, positive community and high quality video downloads of everything we do. We're super proud of it and highly recommend you check it out. But that's all from me for now on this one. 
thanks for watching.